Hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, make sure you check out the description of the video you're watching right now for links to some great online retailers. There's also individual links for knives that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to share with you guys. One that I'm particularly uh, excited about. This is the Hinderer MP1 in titanium. This is kind of a kind of an oddball, kind of a rare knife right now. This was a uh, model MP1 by the way standing for modular platform one. Um, we're going to talk about that. This knife came out a while back. I want to say this is at least two years old, possibly three years old. Uh, this has not been upgraded to the triway pivot system, um, which is the system offered by Hinder in a lot of models right now where you can swap out the internal uh, hardware between bearings, uh, you know, phosphor bronze washers, nylon, whatever. Uh, my XM18 currently is running uh, the triway system. You can see the little triway logo right there, and it's actually using bearings. Um, so it comes with all that hardware. This guy does not. This comes with just the standard nylon washers. Are there plans to release this knife in the triway pivot system? I have absolutely no idea. These are still floating around out there. I see them every now and then just kind of hanging out on different retailer sites. I found one on Monkey Edge here. Um, they are widely varying in price. We'll talk about that a little bit, but yeah, you can find, if I have links, I will link it right down in the description. I will definitely link Hinderer knives that you can absolutely find right now uh, down there as well, so you can check out everything that Hinderer has to offer. This knife was sent to me by Robert. Thank you so much, Robert. He bought this brand new. Uh, this is exactly how it comes uh, from the factory or this particular one, even the titanium scale. They actually did make a few of these that come right out of the gate with a titanium scale. So thank you. It's really awesome to uh, handle a, just a brand new, completely unused one, uh, you know, uh, especially for review. That's great. Um, thank you so much to my generous patrons who are supporting me right now. If you're enjoying the daily knife content on this channel and you'd like to support me as well, there is, of course, a link for my Patreon right down in the description. Your support would mean the world to me. And please follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this guy. Uh, overall length of the Hinder MP1 is coming in at... I mean, if we're going to talk about the knife handle and not that lanyard loop back there, it's seven and three quarter inches. If you want to count the lanyard loop, it's almost, I know that the camera's throwing it way off, um, but like right here on the eight inch line, it's almost reaching that. Maybe 7.8 inches overall. Let's do some size comparisons. Oh, we didn't measure the blade. Sorry. Blade length on this guy coming in at about three point three inches overall and then the cutting edge is, is just a hair over three inches maybe three and an eighth people get mad at me with my, mixing up my <laughs> units of measure uh how about some size comparisons up against the ontario rat model one the rat one is coming in at 8.6 inches overall how about up against the spyderco pm2 spyderco pm2 coming in at 8.3 inches overall how about up against the xm18 I think a lot of people are curious about this. Here's a standard size XM18 three and a half inch. And we're at a slight angle, so overall length is being thrown off just a little bit. The Hinder XM18 three and a half inch comes in at, uh, and this that, that one up top is mine by the way, it comes in at 8.25 inches overall with a three and a half inch blade. Uh, and I think very similar in terms of cutting edge. Yeah, uh, the cutting edge, uh, between the MP1 and the XM18 is exactly the same. Uh, and that's because this guy has a full forward choil. And this has something of a choil. We're going to talk about that here in just a sec. How about up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Ritter Hogue is coming in at 8 inches overall. So just a little just a little bit longer. And how about up against the Spyderco Para 3? Spyderco Para 3 coming in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. And last but not least... The Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Mini Griptilian coming in at uh, 6.75. Is that right? I, for whatever reason, I'm forgetting. 6.75 inches overall. Yeah. So how's the action on this guy? First off, Hinder knives are made in the United States. 100% in the United States. Um, so this is expensive. 
Um, this is not, uh, you know, like it's not the same thing as a U.S. made Kershaw or a ZT. This is very expensive. There's a lot more that goes into this knife in terms of, you know, uh, uh, time intensive and labor intensive machining processes. Uh, there are, you know, little teeny tiny things like the hardware is all done in house. That costs a lot more money. Uh, the finish work, the polishing, uh, the tumbling, things like that. There are processes and finishes and, and you know, elements of this knife that can be found on, on a less expensive knife. Sure. But the overall package, does it cost more money to make? Absolutely. Absolutely. It does. Uh, that results in a higher price tag. Is that higher price tag on this knife totally justified? I'll talk about that here in, in just a little bit. Just, just know I'm a gigantic hinder fan. Huge, huge hinder fan. I've got a playlist on this channel that's dedicated just to hinder knives. There's something like 60 to 80 videos in there. Um, but, uh, I am still going to try and take that bias out of the, uh, out of the equation, bias out of the equation and, and give you guys my honest thoughts here. So anyways, how's the action? <laughs> um, so this is pre triway, but post, you know, hinderer issues with detent. Uh, a lot of you guys who have been around for a while, if you've been kind of following hinder knives over the last, uh, you know, decade, you'll know that, uh, hinderers used to have an issue with weak detent. That was definitely the case with my first XM18. It was kind of weak on the detent. At some point in generation four, they did heavy up the detent a little bit. Uh, they did not change the design. They didn't change uh, the dimensions. They didn't change any flipper tabs or anything like that. They just made the detent a little bit better. And uh, so it is very smooth. It's running on nylon, which is not quite, in my experience, not quite as smooth as bearings, but it can actually feel a little more smooth than phosphor bronze. In some cases, uh, it does take a, a few wiggles, right? So it takes a little tiny bit of encouragement. Flipping action is great. There's plenty of, uh, I would say this is a medium detent. It clicks, right? And the flipper tab on this guy is actually substantially more comfortable than the flipper tab on the XM18 because it's not nearly as sharp or pointy. It's not loaded up with jimping and there's not a harsh landing zone back here. So it's actually pretty nice to flip. But the XM18s, uh, especially, you know, when you've got the triway set up with, uh, you know, the uh, bearings, yeah, they're going to fall shut. Uh, this one is beautifully smooth. So we're not looking at that type of action there. Uh, now, if this gets upgraded to the triway pivot system, which honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea if he plans to continue with these or not. Then I would imagine that it'll get in, you know, it would be insanely smooth. A lot of people look at nylon and they go, no, you know, I'll never, I would never pay that much for a knife uh, with nylon washers. I think uh, in, in the last decade, I've been a, a part of the uh, Hinder Knives uh, uh, Users and Collectors group where we see pictures of people who use these. And by, yeah, you know, people wondering, like, there's no way anybody would actually use a knife that expensive. Oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Oh, oh, my gosh. There are so many people who own Hinder Knives and use them. I have a Hinder XM18 that I use and beat on all the time. It's, yeah, it's, it is expensive. But if you think there are people, there are not people out there who use these types of knives, you're mistaken. There are tons of people. So there's actually quite a bit of data as far as, you know, what kind of goes, what can go wrong with knives like this. You know, it's very little, very, most of the time, if I hear a complaint, it's like, oh, my hinderer kind of has a little bit of lock stick. I guess it'll work itself out. As far as like, you know, failures with these things, very minimal. Once, once ever have I seen a post about somebody who used a hinderer knife and got it, you know, into some pretty dirty stuff and they got, I think they got a grain of sand lodged in there or something and it just, it positioned itself exactly right to get underneath the lip of the nylon washer and tear it a little bit. Once I saw that. <clears throat> There are something like 13,000 people on the Hinder Knives Users and Collectors group, and that doesn't even scratch the surface in terms of the amount of people who are out there who own Hinder Knives. And I mean, as far as like using them, I've seen that once. What I'm saying here is that if you're concerned with the durability of nylon washers in a normal use uh, setting, don't be. Uh, and you know what happened? Rick Hinder replied to that post himself and said, ah, I'll send you out some new washers. That's what happened. Uh, so and not that big of a deal. These knives are very easy to take apart. Hinder knives are known for being modular and very friendly, uh, to the, uh, the end user. He encourages, you know, to, if you want to mod it, you want to take it apart, you want to, that's fine. Right. So, uh, I think, uh, you know, any worries about nylon and its durability, is it as durable? Uh, are they as durable as phosphor bronze? No, absolutely not. Phosphor bronze are going to be more durable. 
Um, and bearings are, I mean, durability, right? It's, it's easier for debris to get inside of the pivot and just kind of screw with the bearings if you're running that. But for the most part, in, in the average usage scenario, the average person, whatever. That's why he did the triway system, so that you can pick, you know, phosphor bronze, nylon, or bearings. Um, with these guys, you only have nylon, but I don't think it's something you guys need to worry about. It's not that big of a deal. I'd love for this to have had phosphor bronze from the factory, but it doesn't. Sounds like Rick Hinder is on top of it with his newer models, so moving on. Um, let's go ahead and do a uh, hardware check on this guy. Get out my tools. Uh, as per usual, the tools are very recommendable. You can find them down in the description. So for the adjustment head, you have a simple flat head. I, I really like this because you can adjust it on the fly with a penny. A penny will fit in there, and if it gets out of whack, you just tighten her down. Um, most of the time, you don't need to have the spanner side in the pivot to adjust it. Uh, there is an official hinderer tool, which I own, and is right here, the armor's tool. These are expensive uh, with the spanner thing, so you can hold on to that side. These run like 60 to 80 bucks. You don't need to do that. You can cut a notch and a penny, or if you don't want to do that, you can go down and buy a spanner bit, a quarter-inch spanner bit, for like $2.50 at your local hardware store. Um, or you can use the back end of toenail clippers to get in there, right? So people calling this a proprietary system, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a proprietary system. Um, it, it's, it's easy to get into. Now, as far as the uh, screws back here, we only have two body screws. And I know people always complain. They got Phillips head and they got whatever's holding in the LBS, right? And then they got a flat head, all these different, oh my gosh. Yeah, you do have to use some different tools to take it apart, but it's pretty easy. Uh, this is, I mean, there are definitely knives out there that are substantially more complicated than hinder knives to take apart. Unfortunately, I think the body screws are actually T6. Um, that's not the case with all hinder knives. Uh, some hinder knives are hex, uh, some are torx, larger or smaller. These guys look to be T6 to my surprise. I, I'd, I'd love for them to be T8. They're not. I generally don't have a problem with hinder hardware because despite the heads being T6 or the fasteners being T6, uh, they're pretty deep. So if you've got a, a good quality uh, driver and and, um, and uh, bit set like the ones I showed there, you're just not going to have a problem with it. Don't over tighten your screws and then you won't run the risk of everything stripping out when you're taking everything apart. Um, but uh, yeah, it's not a deal breaker as I always say. It's just something to be aware of if you're going to take this apart. Um, let's go ahead and do carry profile. So thickness up against the Spyderco pair of three. These are pretty thick. In fact... To my surprise, they're actually just about the same thickness as a standard XM18. Yeah, um, the, it's they're they're about the same. I really thought this guy was thinner and, and much smaller. It, it has much more of a presence than I thought it was. Fairly thick. Uh, unmilled titanium on this guy too, because we are not in the. I'll get my flashlight out. You can pick up my flashlight down in the description. And we are in when this was made, it wasn't, you know, at the time where Hinderer was milling out some of the newer titanium scales. My XM18 has also has an unmilled titanium scale from a long time ago, and that's the way I like it. But a lot of people are not going to like that. They're going to prefer some milling in there to sort of lighten things up. Let's do uh, length and height up against two knives that have awkward carry profiles and every, nobody ever really complains about. Spyderco PM2 and Para 3. You can see here in terms of length, we're coming in just a little bit longer than the uh, the Para 3 and shorter than the PM2. In terms of height, even including this flipper tab, we're still not coming in quite as tall as the PM2. The PM2 is still taller at its, at its highest point, so that's not that big of a deal, especially if all you carry in your pocket, right? People getting hung up on the whole you know, flipper tab thing. If the only thing you carry in your designated knife pocket is your knife, then it doesn't matter. You're going to be just fine. It's going to be dimensions and weight that you should consider. Speaking of dimensions and weights, like I said, it's a heavy boy. We're looking at probably 165 thousandths of S35VN and uh, standard thickness of titanium for hinderer knives. So blade stock thickness on this guy, yeah, 163.5, 100, it's 165. My calipers are probably off. 165 thousandths. Not quite as big as the XM18, not quite as heavy, but I'm going to say this, there's a good chance this guy still comes in at 6 ounces. Just about 5.9 ounces. Here it is up against my full tie unmilled XM18. It comes in at 6.35 ounces. So we're looking at a little less than a, than a, a, a half an ounce difference there uh, between these two. The G10 variants of these, which by the way, they do have a G10 variant of this, or they did. 
right? Um, it comes in uh, with the XM18 G10 variants coming in at about five and a quarter, right? We're looking about an ounce difference. Um, you can bet that this guy probably comes in G10 at about 4.9 ounces. Still going to be kind of heavy. This is definitely going to be a heavier knife. Um, it doesn't bother me. It's right in my wheelhouse, my preferred weight range. Um, and uh, I like heft and solidity, right? But if you're used to smaller knives, bug out, pair of three, right? Or you wear thinner pant material, it's not going to be your thing. Uh, for everybody else, I don't think you're going to have a, uh, a problem uh, as long as it's legal to carry in your area. Let's go ahead and talk about the anatomy here, the profile. So this comes in, as far as I know, only one blade shape, and that's sheep's foot. I think they did some different finishes. Maybe. I think maybe there were, are possibly some DLC ones floating around. Uh, to be honest with you, I'm, I'm kind of going through my memory here, and all I can remember as far as variants of this are... Uh, either titanium or G10. And they had some weird colors of G10. This is one of the models that every now and then you'd find like lime green G10 or purple or something weird or orange and blue layered, right? He doesn't do that often, but he did it on, on these. It's also one of the only models where there was a production variant that was offered uh, from the factory with a titanium scale. Usually you have to buy the knife and then find a scale, <laughs> which is a very not common right now and then you have to had to do it yourself these uh you know a few of these came from the factory with tie scales standard mp1 and g10 i think came in at 425 it may have come in at 450 dollars why the difference in price because this includes the hmbs or the hinderer modular backspacer system which i think was intended to be the next major modular thing that you could do with a wide variety of different knives. They definitely still have those floating around out there for the XM18. I think they make them for the half track. I don't know about the, in the there's so many crazy parts. Even somebody like me who knows a lot about hinder knives, I just can't remember every last little detail. Um, the, with the uh, MP1 standing for uh, hinder uh, modular platform one, uh, obviously this was meant as, I think the selling point. I don't work for hinder, so this is my guess. The selling point for this backspacer. What's the deal with it? Well, first off, the backspacer looks really great, but the idea here is that the backspacer can actually be removed and swapped out for one that has a different tool on the back. In this case, we have just a lanyard loop, but I've seen bottle openers. Uh, I've seen uh, just a plain backspacer. Maybe there was one, you know, and maybe the idea was to have one that had uh, like uh, a, a glass breaker, or, you know, I think a good idea would be to include something like a uh, small flathead uh, or mini pry bar, right? Because I use this on my keys. That This is what I use to like open paint cans and stuff. But they always say, you know, don't use the tip of your blade to pry open something, right? Sa save your blade and use, uh, you know, the right tool. I think it would be kind of neat to have a little, just a little sort of pry tool slash flathead thing. And they're just obviously not meant to be the most ideal thing in every circumstance, but just something you can use if all you have is your knife on you. So kind of neat idea, also kind of gimmicky, obviously kind of gimmicky, right? Um, but there's a lot of extra, you know, parts and getting everything to fit together. I mean, it's not an overly complicated piece, but I can understand why it might have added a little bit of cost to this guy. So if the G10 versions of this knife came in at $450, I can kind of, I can kind of understand that. This is stonewashed, and instead of, uh, on these, on these uh, MP1s, instead of the entire thing being textured or smooth, we have smooth up here and then we have texturing right here which is the same texturing that you saw on my xm18 just a slightly slightly different shape maybe i don't know i think it looks great i think this looks nice i think it would have looked nice totally smooth i think it would have looked nice totally textured but it's cool that they did it like this the g10 ones have the milling uh, area in the exact same place other than that this is typical hinder of fit and finish which means it's perfect. Uh, there's nothing nothing wrong with this guy in terms of fit and finish. Everything just looks beautiful. They do make modular parts for this guy other than you know just the HMBS. The pocket clips and the filler tabs, it's the same across the board for all uh, hinderer models. Uh, well, that take the... I think they all take the same pocket clips and filler tabs, the ones that have the filler tabs. The pivot, if I'm not mistaken, is the exact same pivot that uh, you would use on a standard XM18 3.5 inch. There's actually quite a few models that share the exact same pivot, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, everything looks great. I really like how this backspacer looks. In fact, honestly, uh, if, if I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. This is what I think about the whole backspacer thing. 
I don't really care about the extra tools. I just like the idea of having the option for a backspacer on an on a, a hinderer model, right? I mean, this, the standoffs look fine, but man, I'd love to have, I mean, maybe on an XM18, just a partial backspacer. Leave that, that, that's fine if that standoff is there, but to have a backspacer right here that's frag pattern, right? That'd be great. So if you, you know, and I think that there, there are just plain backspacers out there. A lot of them that you find are in aluminum. I'd like to have an option for a titanium one that comes all the way around that's just frag pattern like this. It's actually slightly different hardware. The stand, so like what you do to remove this is you stick, I think it's a hex head, a small hex head. You, you undo that and then this thing just comes out, right? And then the, there are uh, barrel spacers in there that are cut to accept this, uh, the underneath of the backspacer that are different than the standard backspacers, right? And then they just sort of click into place. Um, that's kind of neat how they did that. You do, they are, they can be pricey. I think the full HMBS runs 60 bucks for aluminum. So if we wanted to see it in titanium, you can bet it would probably cost a hundred bucks, right? That's a lot of money. Hinder parts, they cost a lot of money. They, they cost more than the, you know, if you go to like a knife, website knife building website and you just buy hardware yeah it's not going to cost very much even in titanium a lot of that stuff is made overseas it's not made here right even considering right these parts are made by hinderer they're still really pricey they're still way up you want a titanium scale for an xm18 this is going to run you 200 bucks for a tie scale you can get a nice knife for 200 bucks right i i get it guys it, it's it's crazy expensive so yeah that makes these guys overall ridiculously expensive. I think I remember seeing a full tie variant of this brand new for $700. Oh man, that's all. An XM18 three and a half inch or three inch in full tie, you're gonna put, you're gonna have 625 bucks in that and that's really pushing it. 700 bucks I think is what these guys come in at. Thumb studs are, I don't know, they're a little bit more accessible than the thumb studs on the XM18. Just the position, the overall profile of the knife makes this a little bit easier to open with thumb studs, right? It does snap into place, feels good. Uh, the uh, stop pin on this guy, or actually, it, it doesn't really have external stops. It's It's got these stops right here that are garaged into the frame. They function the same way as the external stops on the XM18, but the XM18 stops or the thumb studs are actually the stops. In this case, that's that's not the case for this guy. That's probably so they could, you know, position the, the studs a little bit better, right? Um, but yeah, the uh, the stops are actually attached to the blade and then they meet the frame back here. That's kind of nice. I, I like how it looks. Blade looks beautiful. The tumbling looks beautiful. I love the uh, laser etched hinder logo. I've always loved that. These are in S35VN. I seem to remember, and maybe my memory is just incorrect, I think I saw a few of these in 20 CV, um, but uh, yeah, the ones that you find out there right now will probably be S35VN, maybe, maybe there are some uh, 20 CV ones out there. Uh, as per usual, the jimping is great. People always wonder about these brown marks in here. Is that corrosion? No, it's actually the heat marks on um, uh, S35VN. Oftentimes you'll see that with the 20 CV versions of the blade, uh, that just doesn't, the, the process doesn't yield the same heat marks, but oftentimes uh, hinderer knives with S35VN will have those little coppery heat marks in between the, um, the, uh, the jimping, right? Not a, not an issue. Uh, this is nicely knocked down up here. No sharp spots. Love the look of the sheep's foot blade. Um, the edge is done very, very well. It is very sharp, but as per usual with hinder knives or standard thickness hinder knives, it's pretty thick. So it's, it's going to be kind of thick behind the edge. Does that mean it won't cut? No, it'll definitely cut, right? If you're going to use this as an EDC knife or a standard thickness XM18, any standard thickness hinder as an EDC knife, you know, is it going to cause you problems in an EDC scenario or just regular cutting? No, it's just going to create slightly more drag than something with thinner geometry. Hinder does a great job with their heat treat. You don't have to worry about that. It doesn't really matter if it's S35VN, if it's 20CV, if it's M390, if it's 01, if it's uh, uh, 3V, right? They've used a bunch of different steels. They, they do a great job with all of their heat treats. Don't be worried about that. This area right here is a very large sharpening twill. Uh, you can force your finger into that position, but this is not comfortable and it's not a position that I would consider myself to be safe in. I'd rather just hold the knife like this. Right now, funny enough, I thought I wasn't be able to get a full purchase on this guy. I wear an XL glove. My hands aren't the biggest hands in the world. I think they're a pretty a decent uh, representation of the average size human hand. But I can get a full purchase on it. I'm pretty crammed in here as far as how the ergonomics on the handle go. Right, but yeah, I can hold on to it. Um, 
Hinders always come from the factory uh, tip down. I don't, I don't like that. I'd switch it to tip up, but you can do that, and I think the pocket clip will feel a little bit better. Honestly, it's really comfortable. Um, with a flipper tab not being a hook shape or not nearly as much of a hook shape as the XM18, right? Um, it just it's ever so slightly more comfortable here, and, and, and it, it uh, you know it works as a guard. Um, you're quite a ways from the cutting edge, and the thumb studs in the cutting path a little bit. So if you're going to cut straight down, you're going to be about right here. We're almost an inch from the cutting edge. You're quite a ways from it. So, and then you know, if you want to force the choke up, you can try, but I don't. I don't think that's the safest position, right? So, ergonomics good, but you're kind of a ways from the cutting path. It's going to be kind of a minor annoyance, right? Man, I love the finish work on it though. The hinders tumbling is just beautiful, slightly reflective. Hardware looks great. Look how they cut the cut the titanium around the hardware. That's really, really nice looking. I like that a lot. I like how this looks from back here too. Nice machine work. I love the edges right here, that extra little line, you know, out, out at the edge. There's just extra chamfering work that just makes this look beautiful. Lanyard loop is out here. It's not in the way, right? And if it wasn't there, who cares? It's not on the frame. They didn't have to worry about where to position the pocket clip. The pocket clip, you know, is, it's not a deep carry or shallow carry clip, so you're probably going to have, let me think about this, right under this. So you're going to have about this much of the knife sticking up out of your pocket. Not bad, not shallow, not deep, right? Relief cut is milled, which is something that's nice to look at. Uh, it's the, generally the case with hinder knives. You get a little more of that texture pattern over here on this side, which is almost completely and totally non-functional, but okay, it's there. Hinder uh, lock bar stabilizer, which not only keeps it from over-traveling, it also keeps it from wiggling this way. That's cool. Um, this does not have the steel lock bar insert because it is not uh, a, it's, it hasn't hit that generation yet, right? It's not tri-way. It doesn't have the insert, but that's fine. It's a carbonized titanium lock face, um, so you shouldn't have to worry about wear over time. It's locking up right now at about 40%, and the blade is completely and totally centered. Blade play. No blade play, up, down, left, or right. Hinders are very solid. If you feel blade play in yours, you probably just need to just just the tiniest little turn on the on the uh, pivot, and you're going to be just fine. All right. So uh, nitpicks on this guy. Um, it's freaking expensive. We're going to come back to that. This should have just been a full forward choil. I don't know why they had to make probably to keep the cutting edge the same as the XM18, right? Um, it's definitely big and thick and bulky and heavy, which for me is something I enjoy. For a lot of people, it's they're not going to enjoy that, right? It's got some T6 screws. Um, the HMBS can be good or bad. It can be gimmicky or useful depending on how you look at it, right? Uh, I don't know that there's a lot more here that's really bugging me all that much. Uh, edge geometry, cutting edge is a little bit thick, right? There's a lot of good here, though, too. Um, this is definitely a super high quality uh, knife that's made in the United States. Ergonomically, it feels pretty good, right? It's a joy to look at. Hinder knives are a joy to look at and to hold. If you've never handled one and you're just wondering, like, I, I feel like I can feel it, right? They feel very similar to how they look. I remember being very impressed with the XM18 uh, when I first handled one. And they are awesome in person. They really do feel like super expensive knives. And you can definitely take this out and use this. Uh, hinder knives are absolutely made to be used. They are very resilient. There is just way too much evidence of uh, people taking their hinders out and using them for extended periods of time for anybody to really say definitively that that is not the case. There's just not enough you know, bad out there to create uh, any real argument against that, right? You're always going to find somebody going, well, my hinder this, or my neighbor Joe from down the street said he had a hinder and it had problems, right? You're always going to see that popping up here and that's the same with any company, but for the most part, no, it is re just insane the amount of, um, you know, information out there about long-term use with these guys. You are safe with that. This is one thing you can be sure of. This is a long-term, super durable, super dependable tool. Price, 700 bucks for the time. Honestly, I think the price on the G10 ones is just fine. 425 to 450, but it's just G10 and titanium and has 35 in and I can get that from blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can, but they're, they're not made the same way right? It does, the materials do not dictate the price. It's how the materials, you know, take the ultimate form, you know, how, what, what form they take and how, how much time it takes to create it, how much it costs to create it, depending on geographic location, right? 
If it's made in China, it's going to cost less to do the same thing versus, you know, made in, made in the United States. It just is. Whether or not that, that is valuable to you, you can make the, you can make up your mind on that, you know, for yourself. But factually, it just costs more money. Is $700 justified for this? Uh, we're looking at a $75 increase, right, if we're comparing these two. Full tie XM18, three and a half inch. For 75 bucks more, you get the full tie MP1. I think the extra, the only place that I can think the extra money goes into is the, the extra work that goes into the backspacer system. Ugh. If you can find this knife out there in, in G10 for 425 to 450, I think you're going to, I think that's a, a, a way better deal. The MP1, I think in a lot of ways is meant to, as an evolution or maybe uh, just a sidestep variant of the XM18. Um, and I think it will offer a lot of good for, for a lot of people, but I don't think it's a better choice than the XM18. This is kind of just as big and bulky as the XM18 three and a half inch standard. Um, but shorter, a little bit smaller. It's definitely bigger and bulkier than the three inch. If you're looking for a smaller, lighter weight hinderer, the three inch or the half track is the way to go. Not this guy. This guy still is definitely a full size knife. So for those of you who like that, maybe you like the profile of this guy better than the XM18, then yeah, you know, there's enough good here that I think you're going to like it. This knife is definitely not going to be for everybody. I think I could recommend the G10 variant, but honestly, I'm kind of going to hold out until, you know, if this had the triway system, if what I was looking at right here was a triway MP1 in G10, let's say it came in at 450 bucks, I'd be recommending this knife 100%. The only reason that I'm not is number one, we're looking at the titanium one. I think 700 bucks is just too much. Honestly, I think $625 is a bit too much for the, uh, the uh, if the tie scales were 150, right, or 125. And I could, you could get into an XM18 full tie for 550. I'd say, yeah, you know, me as a crazy hinder nut, I'm gonna go ahead and pay for it anyway. Even though I, I definitely feel like I'm paying a little bit too much. 700 for this guy, I think is too much. But I think it's, I think it's cool. I think the people who can justify it, and once they get it, they're gonna be really happy with it. But Triway and G10 for 425 to 450, I'd be, mu I'd be so much easier to recommend. In any case, this is still really cool. I'm really happy that I finally got an opportunity to handle an MP1, right? I think there's only one hinderer folder that I've never reviewed on this channel, and that's the Slippy. So uh, hopefully I'll get a chance to do that. But like I said, I've, re I've looked at tons and tons of different hinder knives, all the different uh, folding models, at least some of the fixed models um, and, a, and a lot of different variants. You can actually find that on my uh, hinder knives playlist on my YouTube channel. I will link this guy if I can find it. I will link hinder knives in general so you can check out hinder knives. Uh, but I think that's going to be pretty much it. Thank you again, Robert, for letting me take a look. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody.